Welcome back. It's uh, still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa and now to sports. We have joining us uh, sports journalist uh, Monday Thomas, uh, who will provide as usual superb analysis. Uh, so we look at the West, uh, the Women's African Cup of Nations uh, 2022. Of course, Nigeria Super Eagles uh, into the semi-finals of the competition after defeating uh, eternal rivals Cameroon by uh, a single goal, a goal scored by Rashidat Ajibade, um, of course, propelling Nigeria, not just to the semi-finals of the WAFCON 2022, but also the victory qualifies the team for the ninth consecutive World Cup appearance. Some call it the $1 million uh, game. Um, Mother Thomas, why is this called a one million dollar game? Uh, you know, why is it so important, uh, not just on qualification terms for the World Cup, but also the money as well? Good morning, Bartles. It's great to join you this morning. Uh, we are all bouncing, laughing, and dancing as Nigerians. And it's not quite a surprise because uh, the ladies are always delivering. The ladies are always doing better than the men, but you can't judge the men's football by what the ladies are doing. They're doing great. I don't want people to always say that uh, the ladies are always better than the men because they're in a different category. But talking about what happened yesterday and uh, re re reflecting to the first game we saw where Nigeria lost against South Africa. In that first game, it looked like we were all clueless. It looked like Wandy Waldrum had nothing to offer to the girls. But, you know, sometimes slow and steady does it. Football is a game of patience. He might have made some mistakes in the first uh, game with the uh, players he started. But look at what happened yesterday against the physical, against the very, very strong Cameroonians. Nigeria bossed that particular game because the coach had some changes in the midfield. Okobi came on. Rita Chikula sat on the bench. Ayinda was in the middle of the park. Rajida Jibade was running down the flats like no man's business. So every department in the Super, uh, Super Falcons have improved. And this is what football is all about. Football is about bettering your best, getting better than how you were in your previous game. And just as you call it, a $1 million game, of course, uh, clinching uh, that $225,000 from CAF and $750,000 from FIFA for, for qualifying uh, to the uh, women's biggest uh, football fiesta, which is the World Cup later on next year it's it's what celebrating it's, it's what to it's what uh looking at and of course but i think it's not over yet we are taking on uh, morocco i think on monday and uh, it's not over we are the champions we need to defend this title and i heard from wandy waldrum this morning he's saying there is one more box that needs to be checked and that is winning the women's cup of nation for the 10th time all right uh, just before we get into that, let, let's also look at, you know, uh, the team as a whole. A lot of persons are super excited that, you know, despite we losing that game, but, you know, at the end of the day, we have a win here. And uh, some people are saying this team is not entirely complete because they lack cohesive play. Like, you know, that's not there. And so the need to get to a point where there's fluid football uh, being played playing for a long time so they can actually play you know, a cohesive game. D do you think that it really matters? Is that really an issue with the team? I, I, think, I think it is because uh, football cannot be an individual business. Football is a team business. I can remember Thomas Mueller said something earlier this year. He said, German players will not always come out top at the Ballon d'Or but they've won more World Cups than many sides that have players in the Ballon d'Or. And that, that's what really matters in football. Uh, playing as a, a collection really matters. And when you have a team working for you in three, four, five competitions, you know that you are going to have a stronger team every time you come out of the major competition. So Wani Wadrum should understand this better than uh, keeping this group of ladies who are eager to impress. You take a look at the bench and likes of... Uh, Gift Monday. If you give her a chance, she will certainly punch above her weight because she wants to get the number nine jersey. And sadly enough, it's occupied by Shishara Shola, who is not playing at the tournament any longer. Ifoma Nomanu is also on the, uh, the standby list. She did great, greatly yesterday without assist to uh, 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 Rashida Rajibade. I've got a question for Rashida Rajibade because of how she played yesterday. I'm wondering if she's single because 
every Nigerian is in love with her. <laughs> so that was ha that's what's happened when you play as a team. Not just one year, two years, three years, and you become formidable because football is a game of experience and you need to have some numbers of experience. I'm not talking about over age, but experienced players. You can have experience at the age of 24. Look at the likes of uh, Namazie, uh, Chiamaka Nadozie, the goalkeeper, prolific for Paris uh, FC right there in the French Women League on. And look at her. She's kept three clean sheets. She's not considered a single goal at this Women's Cup of Nation. That speaks of having experience at the age of 21, 22. So keep on exposing these ladies to major competition, major friendly. Thank goodness the NFF have confirmed that uh, uh, on the 6th and uh, thing 13th of September, the Super Falcons will take on America in the United States of America. So that is another opportunity, another avenue where these ladies can get to play themselves again and see how they can better their current best. Mm -hmm. But for them, for me, it's not yet over the Women's Cup of Nation. They need to clinch that 10th title because it's like we've not gained the res respect. I know if some people are still doubting that the Super Falcons cannot win it for the 10th time. And you know when you win a trophy for the 10th time, it's always very big. Like the Real Madrid, they won the La Decima back in 2014. It was a big celebration. And I can't wait for that big celebration to, of course, happen here in the country as well. Courtesy of the Super Falcons of Nigeria. Uh, interesting that you mentioned R.C. Shata Oshola, um, Nigeria's top striker who's been with them uh, in Morocco. Uh, the, the football governing body uh, had to come out to say that, um, as NFF, that uh, she'll be returning to Spain yesterday, Thursday, uh, following the injury that she sustained. Um, of course, Steph, by confirming that she was officially out for the rest of the WAFCON. Uh, um, how, how do you think, you know, her absence has affected the team? You mentioned that a bit, but I want you to talk about that some more. Uh, can Nigeria make it to winning this trophy without Ashley? said? I think I know your answer, but just talk about her absence and how it's affected the team and how you think they can, they can cope without her. Well, I already told you about the constellation of stars we have in the country, that these players are ready to step up to the plate. I even mentioned the list, the Bielsa uh, United hit woman, Gift Monday, who, if you give her a chance, she will step up big time. So I think Ashisha Oshola being absent in the squad is a blessing in disguise because before this tournament, she was accused. She was alleged of uh, not bringing our very best to Nigeria, but she's always scoring goals to Barcelona. And uh, I'm not saying that we were praying for this injury, but this injury came and we've made the best out of it. I think the uh, Super Falcons can win a title without Ashisha Oshola. Well, talking about Ashisha Oshola, yesterday she was uh, included in the shortlisted team, uh, the shortlisted list for the uh, Women's CAF Award later on in uh, the month. So let's just wait. But I think for certain that uh, Nigeria can win a trophy for the 10th time without uh, Ashisha Oshola. But moving forward, I mean, uh, very exciting, but some people think that we would definitely crash out with our encounter with Morocco. And you understand that you all have all the teams who've played, you know, the best of teams in Africa, uh, talking about, you know, the uh, World Cup full qualifiers for the women. But um, do you think that we can, we can survive it? Because we'll be faced, it's a good thing that uh, we would also encounter teams like, you know, America, the friendlies, but will we survive, uh, you know, that encounter with Morocco when then you have uh, Japan and then you have to play, you know, with the United States? These are very, very strong teams. Yeah, I must say that uh, the game against the Atlas Lionesses of uh Morocco is certainly a very feisty and a very tasty encounter. You've seen the Moroccans, how they play sleeky, sexy football, and you see that they are the most improved North African side. And for the first time in history, a North African side will be playing at the FIFA Women's World Cup representing Africa. They're not here to play. When you are the host nation, it's not just about the players. It's about the pride of the whole nation. So Morocco are going to give Nigeria a strong battle. But I, I see uh, uh, the Super Falcons coming, coming out top after this encounter. But it's not going to be easy. I will urge Wandy Waldrum to take at this previous game. Look at how he can improve. Because I believe that you can always uh, better your best. Um, uh, you've talked about the, the slicky, sexy football of the Moroccans. Um, 
Uh, we'll be, we'll be watching that game. You've talked about, um, you know, how how the, the chances of the Falcons or the Super Falcons rather against them. Um, looking at the performance of Nigeria against South Africa, the Falcon, Falcons against South Africa. Looking at the performance against the Lionesses of uh, Cameroon. Um, and, I mean, some words from the Cameroonian women's coach, uh, Gabriel Zabo. You know, he said his girls matched Nigeria's uh, Super Falcon strength for strength. But the Falcons' unbeatable experience was the difference. You know, and uh, he, he gave some his thoughts of, as to why his, team's, his team lost to Nigeria. And he said that uh, the Super Falcons weren't better than the Cameroonians. This happens to be the ninth time in 13 games Nigeria has defeated the Cameroonians. Do you think... The gap between uh, the Super Falcons as a powerhouse in African women's football and the rest of the continent has become so narrow that um, it's not to be taken for granted anymore that the Falcons will win a game. All right, like, like you, like I rightly mentioned, that uh, Morocco have really improved in the past years, and uh, I think football in Africa has taken a new turn. Uh, it's not going to be one man's business. It's not going to be just the Super Falcons. But right now in this competition, the Super Falcons are a, a team to beat. When you compare the first game and the previous game yesterday, you see that they've improved largely in, uh, in, in how they are playing. So if you say that uh, it's almost going to be like the Farmers League, like what we see in the Bundesliga, it's going to be until the 10th time when Nigeria wins the title. And maybe the next competition, we are going to see people try to overthrow the Super Falcons. But this time, I think it's for the Falcons of Nigeria. So still staying with the Falcons, you have talked about how to improve their best and uh, moving forward from a different dimension, getting into you know the game proper. Uh, what areas do you think that the Super Falcons need to pay attention to? They need to pay attention to their strike force. Many a time, uh, many a times uh, in uh, yesterday's game, I saw a former nominal always alone. She was isolated. So they should try to play more with the number nine because if it was Shishara Shola, I'm very sure she wouldn't take it likely with, uh, with the players always leaving her off front alone. But I know we also need to improve in our midfield. Like what we did, we were really compacted in the midfield. Wandy Waldrum got that one spot on. But if former Nomenu was left alone many a time in that particular game. And on for that uh, brilliant cross for, uh, for, from uh, if former to Rajid Rajibadi. I think we should just work as a team. I think Rajid Rajibadi should play as a, a second number nine. Because she's got the finishing. She's got three goals. She's the highest goal scorer, joint highest goal scorer with the Moroccan uh, Chebak Gislin. So she should play as a second number nine to uh, inform a nominal. We should be able to be clinical, take our chances when we have it. So that's what we should improve on. The number nine uh, strike force uh, is not really uh, formidable for me. And I think they need to work on that if they will want to get past the Moroccans. All right. Let's look at the other uh, semi-final pairing. Uh, South Africa joining Zambia, Morocco and Nigeria in the semi-finals to pick the World Cup ticket. Um, what are your thoughts on, on the, other, the other two? Uh, these are countries that come from the, uh, the East Africa slash South Africa, Southern Africa block. Um, you know, do you think they're, they're rising and you know, you know, becoming stronger in African football? I mean, the, uh, the Ghanaians are nowhere to be found and other West Africans are nowhere near this this uh, stage of the tournament well because they are nowhere near uh, it doesn't mean that uh, they are minors as far as uh, women's african football is concerned there's always another competition for them to prove themselves but with the likes of uh, zambia they are also very physical they also play some great football in this tournament but you know south africa with the uh, tut under, uh, under the tutelage of uh, the coach Dizeri Ellis, they've been playing fantastically well. Even when the uh, Talis woman, uh, Tembin Katlana, uh, got that uh, injury that uh, ruptured uh, Kilit's uh, ten, they are also pro uh, producing some great performance. I mean, it's a business side of the tournament. One goal can get you a win. So when you get that one goal, defending with everything you have, just like we saw the Super uh, uh, Falcons yesterday and as well as the South Africans against Tunisia. So that other time, South Africa against Zambia, I think Zambia are going to shock South Africa. They've got the pace. They've got the ability, even with, with, uh, without the likes of Barbara Banda. So this tournament are really seeing teams not playing without their stars. And guess what? They're doing better. 
So, like I said, football is, is, a, is a game of collection. We can't depend on one person uh, to do the job for you. So, Zambia, for me, are going to shock uh, South Africa. And I'm seeing Nigeria take on Zambia in the finals. And you know in the finals what happens? We are going to be winning the finals for the 10th time if we go there. That, that, that will be a, sort of a, a repeat uh, female version of the uh, um, uh, Tunisia uh, 90. Is it Tunisia 92 now? Yeah, uh, Nations Cup. Mm. Uh, <laughs> you know your history, Michael. Yes, in, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right, so oh, quickly. Tunisia 94, rather, sorry. All right. Uh, we need to, uh, you know, get going now. And just before then, I'd like to put you on that spot. What would you say uh, predictions for the game Super Falcons uh, and Morocco on Monday? It's going to be a 2-1 victory in favour of the Super Falcons. Nigeria will score twice before Morocco will score the consolation goal because they are the host nation. <laughs> they need something to cheer about. Monday, Monday, Thomas, we should, we should call it the octopus. I'll call you, give you the name octopus if, if your <laughs> prediction comes right exactly the way you said it. <laughs> but, I'll, I'll give you more predictions because I think this is my calling. Wow. I, I, I need to hook up with you. <laughs> Let's make some money together, bro. Uh, <laughs> but um, the, the UEFA Women's Euro Tournament is going on. Mm. Um, yes, yes. It's, it's a been, women's season. Yes, it's a women's season. Um, wh what are your thoughts on, on the organization of the WAFCON 2022? Looking at what's happening across uh, the Atlantic uh, in, in England. Um, have we been able to build up a standard a bit you know, to a respectable level to be able to, you know, compete with what's happening in, in U, with UEFA? Okay, one thing I, I've seen about the WAFCON and the women's Euros, yes, I think we've seen beautiful pitches. Yeah. The stadium, the facilities in which they are playing, executing this particular tournament, both for the WAFCON and the women's Euros, I mean, the facilities are up to standard. But when we talk about attractive football, or we talk about clinical passing, one-touch football, I think the Europeans are doing much better than we are doing. And we get to see that at the World Cup as well, because they're always dominating. I mean, Nigeria nine-time champions, and they've not even made it, made it to the semifinals of the World Cup before. So for now, for now, the women's youth, are, it's much more attractive, the organization and how everything is set up. But in the coming years, Africa is getting to that. Mm. All right. Well, what about the standard of, of officiating? You know, I, I've seen that in this WAFCON you have, you know, for instance, deployment of um, uh, a video assistant referee, VAR and all that uh, technology mm -hmm. being used. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, more female referees than we have in normal uh, in the male tournaments and they're doing, you know, maybe well. Uh, so what's been your view on the level of officiating so far? It's good. I mean, it's fair. I saw the game, you know, women's football can be very, very difficult to officiate because you need to understand from a woman's perspective what would bring down Ronaldo might injure Ashisha Roshola. <laughs> so it's different to officiate women's football. So that's why I, I, would, I would give them uh, credit. We also have Nigerian referees right there. Uh, Patience Madu who had a brilliant game, I think, in the last uh, Group B encounter. So I, I will give them a, a, fair, a fair mark. Well, uh, Monday, Thomas, thank you so much for speaking with us and being part of the show. We appreciate all of the insight and analysis that you've brought. It is always a pleasure uh, joining the Breakfast Show on PLUS TV, and I much appreciate you for having me on the show this morning. You have a fantastic Friday, and that's the size of our conversation. If you missed out on any part of it, it will be all right to follow us on Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's at Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Ibupo. Have a great Friday. Yes, indeed. My name is Kofi Bartels. We'll be back on Monday. Have a great weekend. Good morning. <laughs>